Hello, everybody, and welcome to Outcomes of Sun Radio. I am here with my amazing co-host, Melissa Yamaguchi. I'm Mariel Hemingway. Thank you for turning in because we're excited to be here. And now that we can talk, now that we're with Dash and we're, you know, up and running, oh my gosh, life is life is good. But uh, so let's have a conversation, Melissa, about what's going on in Maui, because I think that's really... I mean, powerful, right? So, so we are breaking, it's heartbreaking. And I, you know, not to date us here too much for our show, because we, people will come back and hear us all over the point. I think the the big thing is there's, we know today what we know, major fires broke out all over the island of Maui, excuse me, on the West, West side, people on the other side are not faring as, as bad. They're getting the smoke inhalation, but they're not. Anyway, so people have been going into the water, trying to save themselves a lot. There've been many deaths and uh, I think 55 or 60 was the last I'd heard something horrific and it's one death is horrific but it's just painful but I think the bigger the biggest thing is that a lot of the people from the island and the other islands are starting to beg people to not come over there because Southwest Airlines American Airlines some of the airlines Hawaiian Airlines have lowered their fares so that the people on the island can get out and get and get to the mainland or get to somewhere safe because it's just so devastating people have lost homes they've lost everything the city of La, or the town of Lahaina has been decimated so people are, are scrambling with they got out with only the clothes on their back and that's it so there have been people who are there trying to put together resources for them the thing that I think is most was most profound that I heard when my, my Billy was reaching out to some of the people on the island and asking them, my husband, Billy was asking them, what can we, you know, what, what can we do? And they were saying, don't come tell everybody to not come. What right. happens is, you know, people are saying, Oh, the prices are being reduced. I'm going to go to Maui. Cause there's then one half of the island isn't hurt. What we need to really talk about though, is the oversaturated tourism. And I don't want to get up on a soapbox too hard. But the oversaturated tourism on one hand has been a brilliant marketing for the island and it's brought in millions of dollars for but some of our tourists some of our tourism has depleted a lot of the locals of their resources and if we were to go there now selfishly because the tickets are lower and we kind of want to do the rubber necking and see what's going on and go to the safer side of the island then we're taking resources from the people who do so desperately need them there that can't afford to leave yeah so you know no, no matter that's, how- that's heartbreaking no it you know and i know what it's like to live in fire well we both do i mean yeah. we've been it we live in la but i live in idaho part-time and most summers by august there are many wildfires but when you're on an island and it's <sighs> very concentrated and it's small yeah I mean, that is a highly sensitive, dangerous situation, which, you know, fire is, it's no joke. And it's really, it's really hard to survive it because living in smoke is horrible for you. It, it messes with your brain. I mean, there's so much about it that is very, very challenging. This is, this is going to be a long time to remedy and to heal. And so I think what we, what we forget to remember is that each place we visit, whether I come to your home or if I go to a different country or I go to a different part of the United States or a different island or an an island, is that I am, even though I may be well-intentioned and wanting to come and experience the beauty, I'm still taking something from you there. I'm taking resources that are are yours because you live there. And I think we we forget that so wholeheartedly when we travel, we just dive in and take. And I also you're talking about a culture that is really, you know, island culture is very different than being on yes. the main, as they call yes. it. It's different kind of culture. It's very, you know, it's very ritualistic. Yes, there's tons of tourism and they rely on that when the when the weather is beautiful, which is 90% of the time. Yeah. But when you know, I think that we need to honor the cultures that we we that we enter and that we visit. I mean, whether we go to Europe or wherever it is, I mean, I think that as tourists, we have to kind of shift our, I I remember when I traveled as a kid, my parents, we traveled a lot. We traveled to Europe a lot. And, you know, I was very fortunate to be able to go to like cool places when I was a kid. But my, my father, because he grew up in Europe, like he was very adamant that you, 
you entered a culture in a, in a way that didn't ruffle the feathers. He was also a, a, a great environmentalist. So there was something about coming into a place and like not leaving a mark behind, which yes. is very relevant to, a, to an island culture. You come in, you make as little noise, you know, whether that's physical noise, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's one in Rome. When in Rome, yeah, and, and leave, the thing is, nothing, leave nothing behind. It's like going yeah. camping. You know what I mean? Well, and the other thing is, it's such a tenuous, blow blow sh crap up. I don't know. You know what we're I mean? We're in such a tenuous position with Hawaii anyway because they've been colonized. They yeah. were colonized by the Americans, and so when you get and Americans aren't the only ones traveling, and I mean mainlanders aren't the only ones traveling onto the island. So I do want to be clear about that. But when you're talking about a small island that made the decision and, or that were colonized and now feel as though, are, the, are we going to be seen? Are we going to be remembered? Don't forget us. We're mm -hmm. out here and it's, you know, Puerto Rico, when they had all their tragedy, we didn't do as much for them and their like, electrical grid and all that. So this isn't really so I'm, I don't want this to be a political statement. I want this to be a mankind statement. I want us to be cognizant and aware of our fellow brethren who are around the world and are under suffering and not add to their pain and sorrow but somehow help and aid in any way even when times look good even when there's no fire absolutely i think it's just showing up in the world in a it with 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 integrity and yeah. i guess humility you yeah. know wherever you go show up if you're gonna show up like please don't show up there now because they don't want you you know and they can't, can't handle it they can't handle it. No, the and hotels are opening up for all the locals. So if you go that you're taking a room from a local, right? Yeah, it's just not okay. Yeah. It's just not okay. That's, yeah, that's hardcore. You're listening to Outcomes of Sun Radio. Uh, stay with us because we're going to have an amazing guest very, very soon. As a mental health advocate and author, I love books. Books have the capacity to inspire, educate, transform, and ultimately help readers all over the world. So if you wanna publish your book or if you need help writing your story, I highly recommend Mindstir Media, rated the number one best book publisher around the country. Mindstir Media can help you no matter where you are in the book writing or publishing process. Go to mindstermedia.com to learn more and schedule a consultation. Hello, everyone. And we have such an amazing guest, but I'm going to throw it to you, Melissa, because you've actually met and you have a little bit of a relationship. So yeah. I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> what you're throwing, I'm catching. So today we have a great guest that I had the good opportunity to meet through a mutual friend of all of ours, Chris Montgomery with Social Ordeal. And Chris was like, you and Meryl have got to meet this gal. So I had the good fortune of talking on the phone with Courtney Verdon, our next guest. And Courtney is a pelvic floor expert. Well, what is that, you may ask? Oh, just stick around. You want to know. <laughs> you want to know what a pelvic floor expert is. But not only is she a pelvic floor expert, she's also a fitness trainer. And she's create. she is the uh, the direct, she's started the i -Core method where she has an app and we got to find all about it. She's multi-dimensional Courtney Verdon with information for men and women about how to take their health to the next level. And we'll find out why that's so important for us to know here on a mental health concerned podcast radio show. Courtney, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Oh, it's so great to have you. Is it weird that I'm starting to do kegels right now? Sorry. Just no, actually, uh... I don't love kegels. So we've got to get into that because there are so many better ways to train the pelvic floor. <laughs> <laughs> there are better ways? Yes. Oh, thank God, because they're those, uh, you know, they're tired. That can actually make problems worse for a lot of people, depending on what's going on. So that's definitely a topic we have to cover today, because so many women, when they meet me, they say that. They said, oh, I should be doing my kegels. Oops. And I'm like, no, actually, I don't want you doing those. Oh, I'm so excited, because I hate yeah. them. <laughs> Yeah. Yay. All right. I'll let you go, Melissa, and ask. A no, problem. just when I thought I knew everything about you. OK, so <laughs> I discovered through the National Health Institute of Health that women who have pelvic floor dysfunction have higher levels of anxiety, depression, low mood and emotional distress. And yeah. one of the things that I, I 
I think the majority of us assume that only women who've given birth now vaginally have pelvic floor issues. And that's a misnomer, right? So I, I'd like for you to shed a little light on obviously a lot of stuff that we don't know about the pelvic floor. Well, and it, like you said, it really impacts your mental and emotional health in your daily life. And so many people think it's just women who have had babies if when we're talking about women. And while it is more common in those childbearing years as we age, really doesn't matter, you know, because mm -hmm. our bodies all age the same. We have like muscle atrophy, our pelvic floor naturally kind of, we get a lot of issues if we're not taking care of it, like that bladder leakage prolapse. I mean, so many women have bladder leakage, Yes, young, old, even like, you know, teens. And there's so much you can do holistically and naturally like our online programs, you know, it's like 15 to 17 minutes of exercises you can do daily that really restore the pelvic floor if you're having issues and help prevent them in the first place. And, you know, when you said that about the mental and emotional health, I love that helping people fix problems, right? That's how I yeah. kind of got started in this. It's so fun. It's like do, unwinding a puzzle backwards. And when they're not having to, you know, stop and not jump with their kids. I mean, that's like emotional for people, right? You can't enjoy your life. You can't go for a run. You can't jump on the trampoline or you feel like you always have to pee, you know, and that's not just moms. That's just all women can get that. I have a lot of friends who have that feel like you always have to pee or you can't fully evacuate and bladder leak is just one symptom we're talking about, but that affects your daily life. You have to wear a pad or you avoid situations. Yep. And that's like really horrible for someone's self-esteem. It really takes an emotional toll, but once you restore the pelvic floor and it functions well, not only do you have freedom from that, but you really become connected to like your root chakra because the pelvic floor is the base of that. Mm -hmm. And my favorite thing besides fixing the problems is the self-confidence and emotional well-being that you get from really connecting there and just this inner confidence that you really can't get from somewhere else. You're just so connected. And it's just such a beautiful thing. I want all women to experience that. All women deserve to feel like that, you know, and it's so Absolutely. it's life changing. Yeah. Well, it is your root chakra, right? Isn't that, yeah. that's yeah. where it's lodged. Um, so uh, before you ask another question, Melissa, I'm so curious, are, what are, are the exercise, like what kind of exercise, are they core exercise? Like what kind of exercises are they? So it's, that's a great question. So it's not the kegels, right? Kegels are, this is a great place to talk about them too, a concentric contraction, like a tightening, yes. right? So a lot, some women are kind of overly stretched down there all over and kegels could be appropriate for a given amount of time. But unless you're seeing an internal PT who's actually going up there monitoring your tension, how do you know when you're too tight? right? Or when you're toned enough and there's enough tension, and then you cross that point where you have too much tension. Because a lot of women actually have too much tension. They're unable to relax the pelvic floor, which incontinence could be both. You could be too entirely rigid or kind of overstretched. Uh, back pain, tailbone pain, painful yeah. intercourse. Those are all signs your pelvic floor is probably too tense to begin with. And Kegels is going to exacerbate that. So why do something that you know what, there's a better way. So the exercises I have, they're very unique and very different. A lot of pelvic floor exercises are mat based. And while I know them, I utilize a stability ball for so many different reasons. First, as we age, even as early as like 30, it's so interesting, people's stability really starts suffering. And especially as women, I mean, I'm turning 45 this month, and I work with, you know, up to like 60, 70 year old women. And our stability matters, right? And so I love the ball because it improves our stability. It also helps you really connect with your pelvic floor in a different way and really go through full ranges of motion and really activate like your deep core, which the pelvic floor is the base of our core. Yep, so I right. just take you through a series of movements to help restore the pelvic floor in all planes of motion. So it's eccentric and concentric contractions. Because even if you're really tight, Mariel, like we we're talking about the Kegels, tight is dysfunctional. Like, could you imagine doing like a hamstring curl and only doing the, the contraction right. and never the lengthening? Right, right, right. Yeah. And yeah, so it's so important. And, and the pelvic floor is the root chakra, but it's the base of our core. And like, say you're building a home. Would anyone ever 
build a home on a weak foundation? Absolutely not. So why are we like strength training and training and really not addressing the foundation of our core, which is the pelvic floor? It's like the center of our power. So it's something that's just, we don't see it. So we don't think about it. You don't think about it till you have problems, but right. you know, it just helps in so many ways. And it's just so powerful. Did you come up the, with these exercises through doing Pilates? I mean, because you hear a lot about the pelvic floor through Pilates and all that pelvic stuff. Pelvic floor Pilates is a little bit different. So some I've learned from people, some I've made up. Um, just yeah, like I wonder. A collaborative effort of different different things um, that I found work, like some of the ones that I've made up, it was really like, what problems were I having or people I was working with? Like, where are they tight and really unable to like lengthen? Because the exercises I do are like fascial based movements. So it also helps restore fascia. Um, and it's just, it's very different. And I just, it changed my life. I've been doing this kind of stuff for like 20 years, these types of movement. And Everyone I work with, it's just, it's so awesome to see the transformation, not just with their body, but just how they carry themselves and their confidence and posture. So the pelvic floor is, it's pelvic floor workout, it's core and it's postural. It's like a full body, even though I say pelvic floor. Wow. Cool. Makes perfect sense. Well, yeah. In, in the, the work that I do in, in feng shui, we know that there's similar to when you're working with chakras in Ayurvedic, but there are centers of the body. We said we don't call them chakras, but the, the first center, which is the pelvic, includes the pelvic, the pelvic floor, the anus. There's a, a little tender region down there. This area, when it has um, blocked energy, we know that there's some trauma. And so it, it can be childbirth, but it can date all the way back to childhood where there's some yeah. kind of trauma that took place. So when you, what is the earliest age that you, that you think is a healthy time to start working with people on their pelvic floor strength? I mean, like what, what do you feel, when do you feel comfortable doing that? That's what I mean. Well, I mean, I have a 10 year old daughter and she for several years sometimes says pelvic floor. My son has even done it with me. So it's not anything that looks sexual. It's not weird. It's just a workout, you know, some of the exercises, one of them is sitting on the ball bouncing, right? Because when we breathe, our diaphragm is the top of our core and the pelvic floor is the bottom. So when we inhale deeply, the pelvic floor is supposed to really relax and stretch and drop a little bit. And then as we exhale and the diaphragm lifts up, the pelvic floor gently lifts like a little elevator and contracts. And so if we breathe shallow, it's not doing that. So really, any age, Melissa, yeah. that's a great question. Can do pelvic floor? Not necessarily that kids need to be doing that, but I had a 15 year old girl come see me who has a hypertonic pelvic floor, which is too tight. So uh, Muriel, those kegels would make it way worse for her. And she saw an internal PT for six months before seeing me, felt the exact same. And after one session with me, she felt so much better, but I look her at bodies as a whole. So you know, I, I, everything is connected, you know, and that's where that I have all the programs online, the restore and the prenatal, which are so fantastic and they're affordable, like stream streaming prices. Um, and then this challenge I have coming up with Ashley black, this 90 day pelvic floor challenge. I am so excited for, because what you were asking me about like stress and trauma in the pelvic floor is very much related to also we hold that in our fascia. Yeah, and so yeah. she has the fascia blasters. And yeah. so we have an amazing 90 day pelvic floor challenge coming up starting September 1st. And we're going to do weekly lives. It's a private Facebook group with, you know, fascia blasting weekly uh, pelvic floor exercises. It's giveaways. I mean, it's amazing, but we're going to be able to tackle the pelvic floor issues and just the root cause of a lot of the issues women have from a fascial and muscular standpoint, and also like more holistic nutrition. Um, so, so the fascia, we store trauma in the pelvic floor. And even when we see like a scary movie or we're stressed, sure. most women will inadvertently tighten the pelvic floor without even realizing it. So, so many of us actually hold too much tension and need to learn how to relax the pelvic floor. Oh, so interesting. This is so interesting. And, you know, you bring up fa fascia, which is so important to your, like your overall health. I mean, yeah, it's connected every, I, I think that it's kind of, it's just come, well, it's not just coming. And we, we're, we're aware of Ashley Black. We actually did an interview with her and her kind of cohorts, Lisa and. Uh, oh, yeah. 
with that she wrote her book with. Yes. Yeah, the, uh, the the writing of the book. Anyway, we did, but Ashley is doing such important. I think that people don't realize that fashion is really the interconnected kind of web, you know, around the muscles, around everything. So I have a friend who does, uh, she does fashion work, but neuro neuromuscular fashion work, and yeah. she actually works on the body by doing this yeah and, and she she likens it to like when you're getting a knot out of a necklace or or blinds you know how they gets all knotted up and you know how you try to or, or you've done the your wrong iphone thing. headset right and you're trying to do all this instead of gently it it works better it, it's so interesting i just find like all these new ways of addressing the body and i mm -hmm. think we we were also programmed that it was muscles and joints and bones and this and that and you never really realized that fascia was this interesting and intricate kind of part it's almost like an organ it has a life of its own it's it amazing it is it is an organ it's amazing actually it's just yeah. like I love fascia work before I even met Ashley. And then when I got a hold of her tools, I had manual fascia work done too, Mariel. And I loved them because I could do fascia work on myself. I use yeah. it on my kids. And then mm -hmm. when she and I talked about collaborating for this challenge, it was like, I know her results work because I've done it with myself and other people. And I know the results I get. So we're like, oh my gosh, marrying these two and addressing it from both angles. We are so stoked to be able to like really help these women like transform, you know, it's just yeah. so many people are suffering and don't need to be. And it's, it doesn't have to be hard. It's not like you need to do 30 minutes a day. You know, it could be right. 15 to 20 minutes a day. You commit to, to not just improving symptoms or preventing, but to really like feel good, you know, and feel confident and comfortable. And when you said something about trauma, uh, so many women are really closed off sexually right a lot of women unfortunately have had like abuse or rape and have had horrible horrible things happen which emotionally and mentally takes such a toll I can't even imagine but what is really incredible with the fascial work and my programs as well is like when you're doing my exercises you know I have a lot of women close their eyes I do some don't uh, but you really tap into feeling the pelvic floor and you kind of take that power back because mm -hmm. it's not a sexual thing. You're really picturing like the elasticity of like the muscles and the connections with the fascia and the lengthening and rebounding that's happening um, just in a really powerful way. And so I love that it kind of brings people back to take ownership of that area because that's a very powerful area for women. And a lot of women are like, embarrassed about sex or scared to say the word and sex is just the normal part of life right. right I mean it's a beautiful thing and I mean pelvic my exercises make sex so much better <laughs> like <laughs> well I you know and it's not only it's not only the the sex or the the trauma from childhood maybe some childhood trauma it's also women who've had really painful deliveries or women who've had uh, miscarriages or women who've had abortions and it turned yeah. out that, so there's been there's so many opportunities for something to happen where yeah. a woman may not be aware and uh, forgive me for tooting the horn of go women but we have a tendency of taking on so much that we kind of put ourselves on the back burner and we totally. think okay I'll, I'll deal with that later that's not that's not priority speak you know and I, you guys were talking about fashion what it does i think i may have dated some guys with blocked fascia but i have a question <laughs> for you about each person is obviously going to respond differently to mm -hmm. any kind of pelvic any kind of pelvic work. What do you find? And I know this is a I'm throwing a big net here. What do you think is the average amount of time that someone can expect with proper work to start seeing benefits? Are we talking months? Are we talking weeks? What are we? What's the average? Do you think? I know it depends on trauma, age, and I know there's so many variables, but I want to shed some people. light. Yeah, no, I think that's great because I have had women after four times stop peeing themselves and even with a little bit older age, which is unusual. And then some women can take months and months and months because maybe there's a lot of issues. Yeah. That's actually why we did a 90 day challenge. I feel like 30 to 90 days, depending on the women, you're going to start seeing results. Some women are going to be resolved completely within 30 to 60, 90 days. Others might take longer, but if you're really consistent for like one, two, three months, with pelvic floor exercises with my program, 
you will start seeing a difference. Like I have yet to find someone who does not start really noticing a drastic change in their body, right? And you might need more, you might not ever be able to eliminate all the symptoms. It just depends, you know, what's going on with you, but at least alleviate them a lot, right? And for Absolutely. most women, they're going to have a good time. Like I had pregnancy so hard on our body. I gained over, I told you, Melissa, like over 70 pounds with my son, I stopped weighing myself. So it could have been 80. I don't know. And I had like, my daughter was nine pounds, five ounces. And I delivered her vaginally. So I have had like major diastasis, bladder leakage, um, you know, low sensation, sex, back pain, posture, low confidence. And these are the tools that I use to help restore myself. And it's just, I've helped women all around the world. And, you know, I think you just, doctors here check, are you okay to have sex after a baby, right? Like right. very few doctors are checking, Hey, do you need pelvic floor work? Do you have the diastasis recti that we need to address? So then they're going to a trainer or doing a traditional program, doing things that could potentially be making it worse or definitely aren't helping it where I feel like it's such a disservice to women in the United States, pelvic floor therapy and my programs and things like that should be a standard of care after babies. Yes. And for anyone really 30 plus, we should be doing pelvic floor work. It's just a part of life. Like that's what we should be doing. Yes. I, I have a question for you about when you, when you deal with people that have had trauma and maybe they don't even know or remember or whatever, do you find that some people are, do they get emotional doing the exercises or? Yes. Okay. Yes. I've had, and, and that's like that sore trauma, like crying or yeah. all of a sudden feeling like really nervous. Overwhelmed. With them. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's totally okay. You know, and if it's feeling too overwhelming at the time, you can come back another time. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't love giving wow. like do this many reps. So my programs are mostly 15 to 17 minutes, just short and easy. So people can fit it in. But like, if I don't tell you do 30 of this and 40 of this, I love people right. to really honor and listen to their bodies. We get so used to overriding what like our intuition and what our bodies tell us. Yep. And so if something is uncomfortable, you can stop, you can do more of something else, or you can move on and come back to it later. And no, so, yeah, so that's smart. it's so smart because honestly, our into, and it, it's the feminine intuition that we've like hammered down and said, yep. it doesn't matter. I mean, Melissa and I talk about this all the time. It's like, how often in your life have you known something and then you just go oh well I guess I want you know like oh but it's it's okay and then you and then you make all kinds of justifications but I mean honoring that especially in a situation that's very vulnerable and that area is vulnerable I mean you're talking about sex you're talking about things that that we often feel you know, embarrassed, uncomfortable about. I, I, I love. Well, I get more freaked out me. going to a gynecologist for the first time than a dentist. Oh, my. oh yeah. I mean, this is a yeah. vulnerable area, and it's, so it's of course you know people talk about how fearful they are to go to the dentist. Women going to the gynecologist have high stress anxiety. First of all, the whole setup is rude and wrong, so they've got <laughs> to figure that out. Right. But I, the totally. giving. I love that you have your son do this also. Because you know we don't we don't think that this is going to benefit. This is cross cross the board benefit. Men get pelvic floor dysfunction, like erectile yes. dysfunction, back pain, a lot of things, and actually constipation. Constipation is a sign of pelvic floor issues. Now, is it always pelvic floor related? No, but most often pelvic floor exercises will help with constipation, which is a huge problem with people. Jeez Louise, the hemorrhoid doctors are all just canceling our show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I believe in Western medicine too. You know, I think it's it's beautiful thing. It's there for a place, but I always want to try oh, to yeah. do the most holistic first. Yeah. You know, and and then you kind of exhaust the possibilities and work just like with with um, the diastasis recti. That's the separated abs. I had like over a three finger separation. I've helped people with like four and five fingers, which is like severe. And mm -hmm. often four to five fingers. Some of those women will end up needing surgery. So it's not a hundred percent. You're not going to same with like bladder leakage, but those slings that they just, the mesh slings that they try to get women to get immediately, yeah. you know, and I just had a few people contact me this week about it. My doctor said that I have to get a, a mesh sling or I'm not going to stop peeing. And I'm like, what? That is so, that's just not true. Now, maybe down the road, you would need some type of intervention, but wouldn't you try first to yes. see how your body can yes. actually heal? 
Exactly. How well, far out is how, that? Sorry. What's sorry. the longest? What's the longest somebody if someone's discovered they've got some kind of issue? Like how far out can they come back and and work on this? Any, with you? At any it's stage. Never too late. You could be. 40, 50 years after you had your baby, if that's what it is, or you've been whatever the situation is, and it's never too late, Melissa. It's never too late. Awesome. Our bodies are so amazing. If we have the right tools, our bodies truly want to heal, you know, and we live in a society, these band-aid approaches, and that's where I feel like the bladder slings for most women are. It's like, I want a quick fix, right? Or those lasers that women do, that they want to restore their vagina. It's, it's actually tightening right? Tightening or it's, it's heating up tissue. Um, at what expense is that doing? I actually had a, one of the most popular OBGYN, OBGYNs here in LA contact me because she needed to refer people to me after that treatment that she does because she knows it doesn't work because it's a very short-term solution because it actually doesn't, if you think about it, if you're having leakage, say from your, the muscles and the fascia and the tissue are just kind of overstretched and there's not a left elasticity in tone, it's not going to strengthen them. It might tighten, but like if there was a machine that we could put on our abs to tone them, that would really provide strength. We would be using it, right? Like it just doesn't right. exist. There's no shortcut to like healthy fascia, healthy muscles, proper movement. And that's really where I love my exercises too. It's all restorative movement. So it's a yeah. workout, but it's, therapeutic at the same time. And I just, I want everyone to know you don't have to live like that. You could be, you know, 70 years old and do it. I shot, um, I had videos before and these ones I shot my mom, she's going to kill me, but she's over 70. And she's <laughs> like, what about stability? You know, your extra. So I shot my new programs that are, are there like my restore programs for someone like who's fearful of a ball, who's maybe never worked out, where you're gonna have success. Nice. And then each video just slowly progresses. So you can go to whatever level you want to, but you can hold on when you're sitting on a ball if you're uncomfortable, right? Yes. And there's ways to do it and modification. So anyone can do that. That's awesome. I think I may have helped myself and not known it. I'm sitting here realizing when my firstborn was little and she'd get a little fussy at night, I didn't want to get in a rocking chair. I just didn't want to deal with it. So I yeah. bounced on the ball while I was holding yeah. her, bringing her to sleep. Little did I know. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> That's That's so actually, cool. It's so funny because that is one of my exercises, bouncing. So I always tell the, the mamas to be on training, do this when you're nursing, do it when yes. your baby's fussy, because they love it, right? They the baby loved it. Yeah, she, she loved it. My son okay. would bite me while he's breastfeeding. I don't think he dug it as much, but she loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Muriel too, you had said something about like the, the um, shocker, or maybe it was you, Melissa, with like, it's, it's the vagina, it's the anus, but the pelvic floor is a hammock. It's like three layers. So it's yeah. at the front of us, you know, the pubic bone and attaches at the back at the tailbone. And then it's um, side to side, sits bone to sits bone too. So it can lengthen and rebound front to back. Mm -hmm. Side to side, and then laterally. I think of childbirth, right? And how much to allow passage. And I told you I had like a nine pound, uh, nine pound, five ounce baby. It just stretches and then rebounds back. So, Marilla, going back to Kegels, imagine if you're tightening, tightening. Yeah. So now the tissue is really tight. Is it going to be very flexible to allow for passage of a baby? Not really. You probably actually are increasing your risk of ripping and tearing because really? the tissue is tighter. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah stop the kegels yeah so so mariel you don't need to do them i am um, super yeah. excited but i'm going to do your 90 day challenge i'm going to do it with yes. ashley we're we're going to have ashley on too uh so that's amazing i, amazing. I can't you brought her up so that's cool yeah and melissa it's join amazing. the challenge yeah join the challenge if you have time and then before i'll make sure you two are hooked up to the online programs too to the all access so you could kind of see what's all in there um there's like there's going to be some things that drop next month, some resources. I'm going to put in, you know, some other workouts that I won't talk about too much, but it's really everything's connected to really start like the pelvic force full body, but for people to really see how easy it is to fix issues, you know, because I just, I don't want people to live like with issues anymore. You know, it's just so sad, you know, when women are like, I have to wear a pad when I go out or I can't, I can't jump with my kids at the tramp. My kids love going to sky zone. It's a trampoline park. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, a lot of moms can't jump, but I'm like, 
it's so sad because you're missing out on all this fun and memories and things you could be doing with your kids that, you know, you don't think and we don't, like you yeah. said, we don't make ourselves a priority, but like 15 minutes, you can set the alarm to get up 15 minutes earlier and, or stay up 15 That's minutes right. later to do the yeah. workout. Like it's, and mm -hmm. I'm so busy and I know you ladies are, if I want to find 15 minutes, I will. Oh, it's easy. Oh yeah. It's you know what it's that's all like that's just like organizing your life but I'm, I'm a big believer in like look there's probably some place where you can take away from a netflix show or a this or a that scrolling or on the internet going, you know right scrolling on it's mental it's all mental it's a only decision. yeah it is and it is you make those you make the it's a choice it's a choice to i mean i'm a big believer that our lives and our movement of our bodies is to, I think it's all a big adventure and I love it. I'm obsessed with it, but I've also made that a priority in my life. And I've also created that mindset. And I think that that's what you're talking about. It's like, look, if you want this and also it's core work. So, yeah. you know, at the same time, you know, I wish that our, I wish we had known about this for a long time. And, uh, and I know that I know. it's been around, but I know that women from the thirties and forties and fifties, maybe even up to the seventies were using pessaries. Their doctors were using the pessary ring. So that to keep, to keep them intact after they'd had multiple births, women, especially women during the depression. So can you, can, can you imagine if our nurses at least had had this information to pass on to the women, life-changing. Life I know it's such a like it's such a disservice but I just think too as we age I want to to me being fit is not about how I look at all and that's I think so many people focus on like how they look I want to feel good from the inside out right and I want to be a good mover so if I'm a good mover yes. I'm gonna look yeah. good and yeah. feel good and so to me I, I it's fine if you want a certain butt or abs but I always say get a non like body goal right do you want to like yeah, get rid of your shoulder pain do you want good posture yeah. do you want to be able to go for a run like have something tangible that's motivating because looks fade they come they go we might eat too much like and, and looks really don't matter right it's how we feel internally and when we move well we just feel different and we show up differently in the world so that's why i love your yeah. show about like mental and emotional health is so important and that you know i think of like with my children and I take such great care of myself most of the time. I have my moments too, like we all do, you know. Um, I like Meryl has no moments. <laughs> None. Fire. So, oh. you know, we show differently in the world, you know, like when we yeah. take care of ourselves, I'm a better mom, I'm a better friend, I'm a better partner. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I can see that. The, when you feel better, you behave better. You act better. You think better. You see, yeah. the world becomes greater than your area code. You start expanding. Oh, uh, it's so so beautiful. What you're offering people, and not just women, you're offering that to yes. men too. And I think yeah. there's a disconnect. Like we think, you know, they, they probably at the beginning of this have said, "Oh, the floor, I'm out." <laughs> but, it's for men you know, too. So, yeah. Well, and, and Marcus, also, when you think so, about how the well, everybody, everybody, you know, everybody has this center. We all have a pelvis. So it's, you know, like it's not going to go away. And I love that we all need to strengthen that. We all need to strengthen the fascia. You know, it, we, it's just, it makes so much sense. Yeah. And men can do my programs. I just market them for women. I have had some men that do them. Actually, I have more male private clients, which is so interesting. Um, but yeah, they're for everybody. Yeah, and they're probably so like, next meetings, Mariel. Next time we have a show, we're bringing on our little mini fascia tools from Ashley. And we're going to bounce on the ball while we talk. <laughs> Look what I have right here. My, oh, listen, yeah, yeah. Oh. I had that one. I had that little teeny black one too. So sometimes when I I'm know. talking to my husband, he's like, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> my kids love them. I use them on my kids. So really, cool. that's amazing. Oh yeah, I mean oh, it's. They're so helpful. So between my exercises and that, I feel like they're so covered. I'm so lucky and blessed that I know what I do to be able to like help them like Absolutely. feel good in their bodies. Absolutely. That's so cool. Listen, you've been an amazing guest. You are an amazing guest. You might have to come back. I don't know. Oh, I would love <laughs> to. It was so great talking with you both. And oh. Mary, I was telling Melissa, when you get back here, we'll all have to get together and do a workout together, especially if you're doing the challenge. Maybe we go live in the challenge oh, and no, be great. do the workout yeah. live in the challenge. I would yeah, love that. That'd be great. When, when I'm bringing my up. depends. <laughs> what is this? 
We're going to get you to throw those out because you will not I don't use them, them but I'm bringing one just in case. I'm stopping by a store. I've never had to use one. I have a feeling with you two skinny minis, I'm going to be up there fountaining my way off the ball. This is going to be great. I look forward to it. Yay me. You're so you're such a whack job. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. In person. Thank you, Courtney. Oh my gosh. I love her. Here I am. I never have to do a Kegel again. Thank you so much. Um, anyway. <laughs> so I never um, have to know Mary, about it. And you never have to know about it again, but I'll probably bring it up just to be <laughs> cheeky. Um, yeah, if you're just tuning in, guess what? Melissa Yamaguchi has an energy tip. And I just know we're all going to be like, yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for sticking around. You're listening to Out Comes the Sun on Dash Radio and on YouTube, wherever you can find us, but Dash Radio for sure. Listen, we're getting we're getting at a time when we need to start talking about back to school and what does that mean? Well, in feng shui, we've got some ideas here. So for back to school, one of the things you can do is to start acclimating uh, your student and yourself for that time, that transition back into school when books and rulers and calculators and everything come into the forefront and flip-flops in summer kind of slow down just a little bit and so there's a mental process to getting ourselves ready for that transition and we can't just throw our kids into the system and some kids get really excited about back to school and getting all their supplies and other kids dread it but there's a way that we can transition the home mentally and energetically so that this transition to back to school is smooth. So there's a few tips I'd like to share with you. The first one is to create a study center for your child, whether that's in a little area off the main room, whether it's in an area where they're not too isolated and they can't be too distracted by their toys or something, but in an area where they can still feel a part of the family and have a little bit of quiet and that they can so you set this area up and I, it's always a really good tip to bring in some certain photos or posters or images, uh, the planets, uh, the stars and the planets the, and the globe and some maps, bring in some things that take them outside of where they are that allow their minds to expand. If you have a child that's really good in music and wants to explore music, then bring in some musicians that would inspire your child, or if they're really into math, bring in some mathematicians, so forth, like this. In English, it goes on and on. Another thing that's really good is to wherever the, in the child's room to control clutter. Um, yeah, every mom and dad's gonna, gonna be listening to this saying, yeah, lady, give the tips for that. But the truth of the matter is if you have, they used to call it like a junk basket or something, even if you have something where the kid can put things away in this so that when they're going to bed, they wake up, they don't see clutter in their rooms. That clutter, slows down their processes on how they're going to be able to think for the day. Another thing is if it's been proven that if the room is too warm for the child, they won't fare as well in school that day. They won't be as sharp. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to keep the room icy cold, but you need to keep it comfortable 69 to 71, 72, maybe at the hottest. You want to keep that room cool for the child so that when they wake up and they're in school, they can think better more clearly. Um, it's really good to have the computer away from their bed and shut off. Computers and phones near the bed, A, release an electromagnetic wave, uh, energy, excuse me, that can disrupt circadian rhythms. So we wanna keep that away from the kid, but we keep all the electronics, TVs, electronics away from the bedroom as much as possible. I have a lot of friends and, and clients who have TVs in their kids' rooms, then throw a blanket over or something, but it's that energy coming off that can disrupt sleep. Another thing to do is to keep near their study area or even in their room a bulletin board or a display piece that they can put up items that matter to them. And it's almost like one of those vision boards because they're they're putting up their ribbons or papers or reminders for themselves. It's your child's central area where they can keep themselves organized, no matter how chaotic the bulletin board may look to you. But another thing in feng shui is remove storage from underneath the bed. I can't tell you how many beds that I see that have drawers underneath the bed or really long bed skirts. And if you lift it up, there's who knows what's going on underneath there. The antique show's going on underneath there. It's a lot of stuff underneath the bed, but the best thing for the best sleep, you, the area under your bed should be clear. So if you were to tell me, I don't have enough room in my child's room for a dresser. Therefore we have the drawer, the bed with the drawers underneath there um, to keep it to, to keep the room clutter free. You just said, don't have any clutter lady. And now you're telling me to get out the clutter, but it's underneath the bed because I don't have a dresser. 
okay, settle down. What you can do is to ensure that everything under the bed is as neat and tidy as it can be because you don't want that to be cluttered if you have to use that. But if you're able to keep it free, do so. And this is gonna be an interesting thing, I think. In feng shui, we say that the windows open up your eyes to the world. So it's really important that in your child's bedroom that you make sure the windows stay clean. All of our bedrooms, all over, all over the house, the windows should be clean. But while your children are going back to school and they see you making an effort to clean the windows, this clears their vision for the outside world. So those are my tips on getting ready for school. There's some of them are good for us, even if we're not getting ready for school. Hope you enjoyed them. Don't go too far. Stick around. Just turn it down a little bit, then bring it right back up. Meryl Hemingway's coming up next with tips on hip, health and balance, not hips, health and balance. Thank you so much. Yes, I, you know, I have an interesting tip. I don't know if it's a tip. I think it's, uh, I want to make a recommendation to, uh, uh, to read the four agreements because it's a very special, it's a very special book by Don Miguel Ruiz and it, it's called the four agreements. If you haven't heard of it, I'm sure many of you have. Um, and I just want to tell you what the four agreements are and, and, just explain why I think it's it's kind of a wonderful kind of background for for life and just living your life in an in an impeccable way and in an integrous way. Um, so agreement number one is be impeccable with your word, which it, in my mind is such a a beautiful statement because I think that you know our words have tremendous power. I remember somebody not not that long ago. You know, I, I think I've heard this over the years from spiritual teachers or whatever in meditation, but our words are very powerful. So when you are impeccable with your word, you realize the, the impact that your words have. I mean, we know this, we're doing a radio show. We, we know the importance of really trying, trying to use the right words and not just be flippant with words. Um Agreement number two, which is something I've had to work on for oh, so many years and will probably continue to have to work on forever and don't take anything personally. That's a hard one. It's a hard one for all of us because I think that, you know, I had a tendency and I'm getting better, but I'm certainly not great at it, but I had a tendency to make everything about me, <laughs> which sounds, you know, like uh, it sounds like a horrible Thing, but I, I think that I was programmed to do that. I was, you know, like whatever, whatever background, whatever childhood, whatever trauma did made me think, oh, I was in trouble. And I, I, I definitely played a martyr. So I think, I think agreement number two is something very beautiful to work on. You know, don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Uh, I think that's hard for us in a world where we're constantly looking around and making judgments about other people. Uh, Bobby and I do this thing. We work on trying not to complain, criticize, um, and there's one more. Uh, I'm probably forgetting it because I do it all the time. Uh, oh, gossip. Yeah, might be. Um, <laughs> but don't not making assumptions. It's a. It's a. It's just you know. Don't make assumptions. Like in unless you know something. Don't 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 sh don't share what you think. Sometimes you know. Sometimes it's best to keep your mouth shut. Unless you're just me and Melissa chatting. But that's a whole different deal. Um, <laughs> Uh, agreement number four is always do your best. Uh, and I think that that speaks for itself, but it really is a powerful, it's a powerful kind of thing. Oh my gosh. You know, if you feel that you've done your best, it, it goes back to some of the shows we've talked about kids and, and talking about their effort, not the success of something, but wow, what an amazing effort. If you're doing your best, that means you're showing up. And I think that's really powerful. Anyway, there's so much more in depth in the book when you read it. I mean, there's the, you know, there's online courses about this, but I, I just highly recommend uh the four agreements is a great way to kind of honor how to how to live your life in a in a in a in a way that is full of integrity. So that's all I have for you. I love it. Isn't it nice to make an agreement to live a good life? How about that? It's, it's yeah. awesome. 
One hundred percent. And just and it is a choice. I think that we think it's not when we're going through difficult times. We think something's happening to us. But there's always a choice that you can shift that energy just by doing something different. Yep. It doesn't mean that the the problem goes away, but it means that you're addressing it from the another side and right. choosing to look at it differently. And I think that's a powerful way to look at your life, right? Choose to to look at it differently. Well, there's not one of us that hasn't been scathed by, uh, burned by tragedy. Every single one of us has something, every single one of us. So it's a matter of determining you're going to get up and and one more day moving forward, one more day. And I like it. I like it moving forward with integrity. I think it's powerful. I like it. It makes makes the transition smoother. We listen, we got Courtney talking about how doing a simple, a couple of little techniques makes the body feel better. Why don't we do techniques with our spirit and our mind to make our life better? Well, especially our show really is about, you know, it is mental health, but that, and, and I say it over and over again, it's everything we do. It's what we think. It's what we, it's how we get up in the morning. It's whether we move our bodies because you're honoring it. That's, that's showing integrity. Like you love it. If you really love your life and you love this gift you've been given, then take care of it. Yes. You know, like you don't, it's like you brought up with the, the clutter under you. It's like, it's like, take care of your environment and it will take care of you. And every, everything works yeah. in harmony. The I don't know. Bones I connected it, to the femur bone, the femur bone connected to the tibia bone. Pelvic. The pelvic floor. Okay. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's all we got for you today. Thank this you so much. Fun. Thank you all so much. <laughs> this is fun. Here are listening to Outcomes of Sun Radio. You know, come back because we always have something interesting that we're talking about. And uh, remember, remember that this is also supporting uh, the Mariel Hemingway Foundation.org, which is a foundation to what we would like to become is a resource navigator so that we can come up with solutions for mental health problems, no matter where you are in the country, in the world eventually. But we kind of need your help to do that. So if you're interested, go to MarielHemingwayFoundation.org. Otherwise, just, you know, come back to Dash, come back to Spotify, come back to YouTube, come back to Apple, blah, 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 blah. Baby, come back. (laughs) Any kind of food. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> You're better at like going into song than I am. I I, I, I fade. <laughs> anyway, do come back, please. We love you. Melissa Yamaguchi and Marielle Hemingway signing off today. Bye-bye.